Hi, welcome back to Art Therapy with Rose. I'm Rose Turner. I also go by comics. So, five years ago, I thought that I lost my brother to mental illness. Um, and it was impossibly difficult to see him struggling through um, this sort of like broken, dark, kaleidoscopic world that he um, seemed to be stumbling through. So seeing him go through that um, instantly triggered me into a year of anxiety and depression. Um, and, you know, I'd never really experienced either of those things beforehand, and I didn't know, I didn't identify them as such until after the fact. I read an article, stumbled upon an article about anxiety and depression, and then I was like, oh, that's what I went through. Okay. <laughs> um, but, <clears throat> so during this time, for about nine months, I made almost no art whatsoever. Oh, yeah, anyway, I was really struggling um, through this sort of humid, foggy limbo, and it was awful. Um, and, um, but, you know, I was healing alongside, like, sort of parallel to my brother's healing, um, and so, uh, finally, after about nine months, I made this doodle of a maze, um, and that maze led to another maze and another one, um, and, like, I just couldn't stop making these mazes. I had never made anything like that before, um, it was very unprecedented, and aesthetically they are totally unrelated to anything that I've made since, um, but making them was really important um, to my artistic healing, and my healing just as a person overall. Because um, these mazes are, they were, it was very cathartic. Um, I could just kind of get lost in the maze. Um, these mazes were um, not really the art that I wanted to make, um, but they were the art that I needed to make in order to make the art that I wanted to make. It was like the only thing that I could create. Um, and yeah, it was very, it, it was very, very cathartic because I could just kind of lose myself in these mazes, um, and, uh, you know, it was sort of like busy work for my hands that distracted my brain just enough to free up the rest of my brain to process everything that was going on in my life from the past, like, year before that. I felt like I didn't really have the, the time or the resources, um, or the, like, emotional resources to process all these things that were going on in my life, so that's why I was building up all of this depression and anxiety and was feeling, like, just lost in this limbo, um, for such a long time. <clears throat> they were metaphorical. I would make these labyrinths with no intention of having them be solvable. But that was what it felt like. I felt like I was lost in this limbo, this labyrinth, and just didn't really know how to get through. Ultimately, what got me through was figuring out that, you know, I shouldn't take things for granted and should just look a little closer at things and see the beauty in things and see the way through and just decide that some things just don't have power over me anymore. So, I don't know how many of these uh, mazes or labyrinths I've made in total. Um, I'm gonna guess around 40 or 50. <clears throat> um, and they really changed a lot. They're, there's a lot, kind of a lot of variety among them. Um, it started just with, uh, I think just with pen and paper. With, with each of these mazes, I felt like I was kind of getting... Um, kind of getting closer to getting out of my own labyrinth of suffering, uh, if you will. 
and um, so it was really good. And then once I had made all these and kind of felt like I was healed enough and uh, was able to make other art and kind of move on to my next era, um, I collected all of the labyrinths together, the mazes together, and made this uh, little booklet called Out of the Labyrinth. Um, and it's got, you know, kind of this, the whole series in there um, of all these different mazes that I made, um, and then a poem at the end, and a little bit more explanation in there. Um, I think I think I had 25 copies made or something like that. Um, so this is my last one. This is my personal copy. <laughs> um, but uh, I guess if people want it, I can have another round printed. But um, that's not the point. The point is that uh, it was really good to give this to some close friends and family um, after all this had happened to kind of put a bow around the whole experience so that I could kind of move on. It was really kind of a beautiful uh, center to the whole thing. Um, closure. Uh, and it, it was such a big experience for me, a big shift in my life, that it f would have felt weird to not share it in that way and sh kind of share what I had learned um, and how I had changed. So, yeah. There's all of that. Anyway, so for today's project, let's make a maze. <laughs> um, this thing keeps on moving. It doesn't really go, the lampshade doesn't really go with the lamp. Um, thrift store finds. What, can't be a goblin king on a budget? It's a times of crisis. Um, <laughs> um, for today's project, let's make a maze. Um, now remember, you can do whatever you want, because there are no real rules in art. With art therapy, it's really not about the product, it's about the process. Um, or it's the same, basically the same as, um, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. You know, it's basically the same thing, um, but yeah. Anyway, like I said, you can make whatever you want for yours, um, but I'll just kind of give you some ideas, um, because I kind of played with, um, a few different techniques for making my labyrinths, um, so, yeah, I'll kind of talk you through that. So for some of them I was just kind of like, I made a shape and filled it up, you know? Um, I did a lot of that, or, um, you know, this is kind of the same thing, I just did a profile and filled that up with a maze. Um, and, you know, you, you can make it solvable if you want to, that takes a lot more strategy, but I never made, per never purposefully made mine solvable. Um, you know, a bunch of different stuff. For some of them, it was actually, um, I would fill the page just completely, but, um, I would pencil in some kind of pattern um, and shift between colors. Uh, so here we have kind of puzzle pieces. I don't know how well this is showing up, but red and black uh, puzzle pieces. But it's just a full full page of the maze, um, but it was swapping colors. So that's one technique. Um, with this one, I filled the canvas with the maze, just the whole canvas, and then I used ink um, all over my hand and plopped it on there and it had a really cool effect. This is one of my favorites that I've done. Um, so there's that one. Uh, there's this one where I put the ink on first. So I made this shape and then I made the labyrinth, the maze around it. Um, so that's cool. And there's this one, which I actually have a video on YouTube of, like, a time-lapse of this being made. So if you want to see that for some inspiration, you can do that. But this one, same as last, where I put all the, this ink on first, and then, um, I just filled the rest of it with the maze. Um, so those are some 
Uh, some ideas for you to work with. Um, have at it. Use whatever your materials you have on hand. Hopefully you have something. Um, but yeah, and I will show you what I make. Anyway, hey, so this is what I made. Uh, this is the worm from the movie Labyrinth, um, <clears throat> which is a documentary about my life <laughs> as the Goblin King. Um, no, um, anyway, I always like this worm. It's really friendly. Uh, he likes tea. I like tea. I feel like we would be buddies. Um, anyway, and he is surrounded by a labyrinth. Um, so for this one, um, as you saw, I um, painted him first, and then I made the labyrinth around him. This took kind of a long time to make. Um, takes a lot of uh, sort of mundane work make these labyrinths, but that's kind of the point of them. Um, I make mine really square um, and straight, but you can use like rectangle, or I mean, you can use triangles or hexagons or whatever shapes you want. You can mix things up. You can do whatever you want because there are no real rules in art. Um, <clears throat> anyway, that's what I made, and I hope you have a good day. Okay. Be well. Bye.